Did you know that Queen Elizabeth II actually had a combat deployed B-17 bomber that the US Army Air Force honored her with? Neither did I. But in this video, we will review the tragic story of one of the most unique and iconic bombers in World War II. Nearly everyone knows the late Queen Elizabeth II, but what many people often forget is that she actually became princess and first in line to the throne in 1936. So, during World War II, she was a key figure in the royal family and thus played a substantial role in the war effort from a propaganda and morale purpose for the troops that were stationed in her country. When England began to see heavy bombing from the Luftwaffe in 1940, it was suggested that Elizabeth, who was 14 at the time, and her sister be evacuated to Canada for their safety. Their mother, however, refused this idea and demanded that they remain in England. Because of this, Elizabeth made it a priority to aid in the war effort in whatever ways possible. This began as early as 1940, when she gave her first speech on BBC Radio, specifically designed to boost the morale of British children who had been forced to evacuate during the bombings of London and the surrounding area. As the war went on, however, and she became an adult, the young Princess Elizabeth began to visit troops and service members across her country to encourage them in their struggle. These would go on throughout the remainder of the war, but one of them in particular would stand out as a major part of this story. This would take place on July 6th of 1944, when she would visit the 306th Bomb Group, which had decided to name one of the B-17 bombers after Her Royal Highness. This would be B-17 serial number 42-102547 and would actually be originally dubbed Princess Elizabeth. But unfortunately, this original name was not met with approval from officials who feared the repercussions of naming an aircraft directly after a member of the royal family. It was thought that there could be negative propaganda if such an aircraft were lost in combat to the enemy, who could claim it as a major victory. So the aircrew, not wanting to fully abandon their idea, instead opted to change the name of their flying fortress to the Rose of York. This was deemed acceptable and the title was added to their B-17, along with an eloquent rose. The princess would have a celebrated visit to the airbase where the 306 were stationed, and would even christen the new B-17 herself, taking pictures with many of the American commanders and airmen there. As the Rose of York would take off to enter the war, she would perform her duty well in some of the most gruesome air combat in history. The renowned B-17 would complete 62 missions over Europe in the next six months, striking targets of value all over German-occupied territory. Her initial crew would complete their tour of duty with flying colors and would be relieved by a new group of American airmen who quickly resumed their success. The Rose of York was proving to be well worth the honor of her namesake. But on February 3rd of 1945, that would change. On this day, under the orders of 8th Air Force Commander Jimmy Doolittle, a mission would be set to raid deep into Germany that would see a massive force of American firepower taking off from England and striking deep into the heart of Germany, right upon the capital city of Berlin. These were the most dangerous missions for these B-17s because it meant that these airmen had to fly across many miles of German territory that was littered with anti-aircraft units, which were desperately trying to defend their nation. But nonetheless, the Rose of York and the rest of the 306th would embark upon this assignment, as they had done many times before. All was well for the first leg of the journey, but over Berlin, the anti-aircraft fire began to get very thick. Unfortunately, a well-aimed round would hit the Rose of York around the time that she released her payload. This would deal significant damage to her airframe, but she would carry on as they turned back towards England. On the return flight, however, with the Germans now knowing that the B-17s would be passing back over their territory in their journey back home, the intense flak would only get worse. 
Here, yet again, another round of anti-aircraft fire would score a direct hit on the Rose of York. The aircraft was still flying, but lost significant speed and was losing altitude fairly quickly. The Rose of York was left behind by the rest of the formation and was forced to try and make it back to England on her own. Shortly after this, she would make her final radio contact, in which her crew reported that they had lost one of their four engines and that another was streaming fuel. Tragically, no one would ever hear from the crew members on the Rose of York ever again. Her fate is not fully known as no wreckage was ever located of the iconic aircraft, but it is believed that while she attempted to fly back home, she likely crashed into the channel. In the loss of this B-17, nine American airmen were likely killed in the crash or shortly after. In addition to their crew, a well-known BBC war correspondent by the name of Guy Byam was also on board this flying fortress during its last mission. His lengthy career as a reporter in the thick of battle included being one of the few survivors of the HMS Jervis Bay, which was sunk by a submarine in the North Atlantic in 1940. In addition, he also jumped into Normandy with the airborne troops on D-Day, as well as Operation Market Garden. Unfortunately, however, he, along with the Rose of York and her nine crew members, have never been found and have since been listed as killed in action. But their legacy lives on and her combat record stands as a compelling tribute to the one and only Queen Elizabeth II, the Rose of York. Please consider subscribing for more great content.